to spend this time together. As I said, we are excited about the Patreon story. And in our work with you, we've actually just, quite frankly, each of the consultants who work with you were inspired. <laughs> All of our, and our firm has been inspired. So we look forward to this discussion. We'd we'll love to hear from your perspective. As you were thinking about your chief people officer, how were you basically, how did that influence you, the idea of purpose? Not yeah, I'll, I'll give you some thoughts on <clears throat> on hiring for purpose in general and then with, with regard yeah. to chief people officer. Um, <clears throat> I think three, three things come to mind when I think of hiring for purpose. Um, the first thing is, <clears throat> I, I, I look for folks who have the ability to fall in love with the customer. Um, and a way to think about this is, is like a passion muscle. If you ask somebody, what are they really passionate about? <laughs> and there's something that they've clearly fallen in love with, and it's serving a, a, a key purpose where they're, they're helping a person achieve something or do something or, or live their dream. Um, that's what I call the passion muscle. It's when somebody lights up as they're telling you about something. And it doesn't mean that they're expressive and emotive and effusive. I'm, I know I, I probably have a natural cognitive bias toward, toward the, that sort of thing. So I've worked very hard to not just look for people who sort of express it internally, but try to actually like dig out somebody's passion, even if they express it differently. I think you can actually find people who are deeply intrinsically passionate about serving others. Um, and I found that those people, it's quite easy for them to fall in love with creators, even if they've never served creators before. If they love and are passionate about serving people and helping people, um, it, it actually Patreon's mission will just, it'll be like a magnet for them. Um, so we look for, for, I look for people who have what I call the passion muscle, people who can fall in love with the customer. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, there's there's a um, there's an ambition for the purpose that I look for, an ambition for impact broader than ambition for the self. And everybody has some ambition for the self, and that's that's just who we are. <laughs> Humans are wired that way, and so everybody has self ambition, and that's that's great. Um, and some people have ambition for something beyond, in addition to ambition for themselves. They have ambition for impact. They have ambition for something um, broad, something big. Um, they have an appetite to make a difference. Um, if you find that in somebody, th that is also a, a way to know that you're hiring for purpose. It's it's a person who whose um, you know ambition for for causing good in the world outweighs the ego. Um, so I look for that too. Um, and that's that, how do you find that? It's, you can tell when you're talking to somebody if they have this insatiable desire to make things better for, the, for everybody else. Um, there's, there's, a, uh, there's sort of a, a grandiose way of thinking about the world and, um, and, uh, and, and, and a desire to, um, you know, to, to have scaled impact is a way to think about it. And then there's a, <clears throat> there's a third thing too, um, which might seem obvious, but it's just true. It's, you know, when we tell people what our mission is, do they get curious about it? Are they interested in it? Does it resonate? Is it something that gets them excited? I've literally told people what our mission is, and then they've asked unrelated questions about you know, this, that, or, you know, what, what is the benefit package like? Um, and it's not to say that like, you know, we don't of, of course want to have a kick-ass benefit package and have great comp and all that stuff. But boy, if I spend 10 minutes talking about serving creators and why we exist in the world, and it's just not even interesting to somebody, um, then, um, uh, then you know that we got to when when somebody tells you who they are, listen. Um, so that's probably a third. That's probably a third. Uh, a third thing uh, that I look for when when looking for the the you know hiring for purpose. And then with regard to you know um, chief people officer, this is a really hard gig. I mean, Tiffany, I know you you know you have a hard gig, but it is a hard job. Um, and I think it's gotten harder over the last year with so many external market forces. 
Um, you know, not the least of which is working remotely in this transition for so many companies in this strange in-between state. And it requires, the job requires an incredible combination of human empathy and outcome-focused results orientation and systems design. That is a very rare combination to find in somebody. It's a little different than hiring for purpose, but it's, it's, it's similar. It's, it's a, it's a purpose around, you know, what, what is the purpose of this function at a company? What is the impact that it can cause? Um, what does it ladder into? Um, and, it, and it requires these, these two different halves of your brain. Um, uh, and, and I think, um, yeah, f- finding somebody who has that combination of that intense empathy, human psychology, uh, understanding of human psychology, um, understanding of people, high EQ, um, that plus incredible at scale and systems and uh, process. I think one of the things that that we've really been reflecting on, and it's actually been work that I've found really inspiring to do, especially doing it with Jack and doing it at Patreon, is really thinking about this idea of how purpose informs um, your decision making. And recognizing that it's such a critical part of your identity and how you express yourself. Um, And so the clearer you are on your purpose, um, the more information you can put in the brochure. So people are like really clear on what they're signing up for, um, recognizing not every culture is right for everyone um, and that's okay. Um, But the clearer you are about that, the easier it is to kind of have a framework or a point of view that enables sort of that reflection and also assessment. Um, So that's been like a really fun process that we have been on the journey on. And it sort of started with taking the founder story, um, taking this mission, this really important mission that we're a part of, and really starting to codify that and thinking about how does that, how would we express ourselves then as an employer brand? And so we've been using sort of the founder story to help build out our employer brand. And I think that has made it a lot clearer to then uncover, well, what are some of the core behaviors that enable that brand to come to life? And then how do you codify that so that we just create so much clarity? Um, and it's a lot of the examples that Jack already shared. Um, and some of, so some of the work that we've been doing um, that I've found really fun is really thinking about like, well, what are our differentiators? Like, what are some things that you would find? There's lots of companies who might be participating in the creator economy in lots of different ways, but what is it that makes um, Patreon special and unique? And that work has been really fun. And it's kind of gotten us to this thought of like, what we're trying to build is this new culture of creation. And we are really thinking about that with sort of three lenses in mind. A, just this clarity around the mission and the purpose. And so anyone who comes and works for us has to have that engagement and wants to be a part of that movement and takes a lot of excitement in solving this important problem that Jack just talked about. Um, We talked about this idea of creative culture. Like our culture is built around a founder who's a musician. Um, That is very different than probably what you see in Silicon Valley where a lot of founders like start coding and they build a, a solution to a problem. But this creator lives the problem and is built a solution around that with this creator space. And so we look at ourselves and the people that we attract is people who have a lot of pride in their craft and what they build and that passion because we want that to match our creators. Um, and that's sort of how they think about their pride in their craft. So we want us to have that creative spirit. And then I think also the, the one unique thing that is very Patreon um, is this challenger space that's safe. Um, creating safety around a space that really is going to push you. And so that's not for everyone, but we think the folks who who live it and love pushing themselves, um, they're not afraid to be vulnerable. They're not afraid of feedback. Um, They're not afraid of like, maybe their best idea could be better. Um, They're going to love it at Patreon. And so that's something that we absolutely want to assess for. And by making it safe, it means we honor everyone's identity and we honor their journey. Um, We love that people come from different experiences and backgrounds. So we need you to love that too, because that's going to be your reality. You're going to be around colleagues who approach work very differently. And we want to push each other and leverage that tension to create our best work. So I think this idea of purpose has really helped us identify how would we shop for that? How do we put it out there so that we're attracting uh, great talent? And then again, creating the systems, as Jack mentioned, that 
make it possible to kind of make that culture come to life. And that's some of the work that has been super fun for us to like get our hands in and start to build around. That is great. Thank you very much. I, I did, I saw all three of the things that Jack highlighted <laughs> uh, in your answer there, even in the way that you expressed it, quite frankly. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that. When you think about Tiffany, keeping that thought, right? Hiring, how is hiring for purpose, right? Influence the company's growth. Jack discussed the challenges of, you know, talking to someone about the organization's purpose, challenge and opportunity, and they talk about benefits. But maybe, uh, maybe give us a sense of how, how, is, how is hiring for purpose really influence growth, right? Your, your people build business, build on creators. Maybe give us some thoughts around that. Yeah, um, just kind of picking up on a string that I shared a little bit earlier, I think, for us now that we've really spent this time on this employee value proposition, getting really clear on that, we've really been focusing on what are the core behaviors that will really enable that growth? And why do those behaviors matter now more than ever? So I think that is like a key part of our hiring strategy because everyone we bring in, we want them to feel like this is a place where they do their best work. And when we have those misalignments, um, that creates a, a conflict. And so we wanna try to be as transparent as possible, assess for that as much as we can. And even internally, as folks are growing with us, recognizing that these expectations will continue to be important to us as we continue to grow. Thank you. This, this has been a great discussion. Uh, we, we, we really appreciate it. I think there are a number of things that, that resonate. When, as we've been advising clients, we tell them that, you know, should think about moving the needle when it comes to and actually having impact, to use your term, genuine impact. Uh, uh, as an organization or having a purposeful organization um, that you really have to just do three things, right? One, one is define it, define why diversity, define why equity and inclusion are, are important for your organization. There's an articulation piece. I think, Jack and Tiffany, you've done that well. This is what it means for Patreon. You, you, you have to link it to your talent and business strategy. And quite frankly, you've done that. You are doing that and living that daily. And to some extent, you have to measure impact and adjust as Tiffany, as you said, what works, what doesn't. There are frameworks for everything. There are initiatives for everything. What, 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 what works for us and how we measure the impact of that over time. So I, I applaud you, by the way, for doing it. And I think doing all of that with, uh, in an authentic way, in, in a genuine way, is, is important. And I think doing all those things help you actually position your organization to be attractors of top talent over time. And we look forward to uh, the journey with you.